Hello, wonderful nonprofit rock stars. This is Tom Check with Greater Impact Consulting, helping you spend less time in your database so you can spend more time on your mission. And today we are talking about real basics of Salesforce administration. Today we're talking about how to add a field to an object. So you've got lots of default objects in Salesforce like contacts and leads and opportunities, which us nonprofit folks call donations and our campaigns, which is our fundraising uh, opportunities, our fundraising campaigns. Um, and the fields that come with Salesforce might not be exactly what you need. They might be missing some of the things that you use in your organization that you want to track. And so today we're going to do a real basic intro to how to create a new field on a contact. So contacts are the bread and butter of, of interacting with Salesforce. They are the people that you interact with. And oftentimes we track more data for our people than Salesforce has by default. So today we're going to take a look at how to add something as basic as a LinkedIn URL, a LinkedIn link, um, on our contacts so that we can have easy access to be able to see our contacts LinkedIn pages. So the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and click over to Salesforce. First thing we're going to do is we are going to go in to setup. And to do that, we click on this little cog icon in the right hand corner, go to setup. And from here, we're going to click on this object manager up at the top. That takes us to the place where all of our objects and all of our fields and page layouts and everything related to objects are. So none of the user information, none of the profiles or security stuff is over here. This is all just objects. From here, we're going to search for, like I said, our contact object is the one we're working with today in this example. So I just go to the quick find box and I start typing contact and it pulls up everything related to a contact. Your list might be different depending on the apps that you've installed. Um, so if you haven't installed any apps, you might just see contact role and contact, or you might see all of these. If we click on contact, and this will take us to the contact object manager. And on the left here, we've got all the different things that we can adjust for the contact object. What we're worried about today is the fields and relationships. Now, these are all the fields on the right-hand side that exist for the contact object. There's a lot of them, and it'll keep loading more and more and more until I get all the way to the bottom. What I'm looking to do, like I said for our demo today, is I want to create a field on our contact records where my users can go ahead and add in the URL for a LinkedIn page for a contact. So to do that, I'm going to click on this new button up at the top. And the first thing it's going to ask me for is what type of data am I going to be working with here? I can work with numbers, formulas, lookups, checkboxes, dates, emails. Some of these you're probably going to use a lot of. Texts, uh, you're probably going to use a lot of text. You're probably going to use a lot of pick lists and probably checklists. Those are what a lot of us start with. For this, we're going to start with URL. And the nice part about a, a URL is that when a user clicks it, it opens that in a new browser so that they don't have to go copy and paste stuff, which is what we would get if we selected a text type of data. So with URL selected, I click Next. This page will look a little different depending on which data type you select, but you're always going to have to create a field label. So for this, we're going to call this the LinkedIn URL. Field name, when I click down to it, automatically pulls in the information from the label, changes a little bit so that Salesforce can understand it. Um, so it puts a, an underscore in where the spaces are. The description box is something that only administrators see. So this is your gift to your future self and future administrators of your org to let them know what this is all about. In general, my best practice recommendation is to include the date that it was created, who created it, and what it was created for. So for this, I would say, Created 11-30-2020 by Tom Check to track LinkedIn profiles of our contacts. Help text is a little different. It's the gift you give to your users. So it's what they get to see when they are confused about what to enter into this box. 
So here you give them really clear guidance on what you hope to see in there. So I would say copy and paste the link from a you from a contacts linked in profile here. You can determine whether this is required. In our case, it won't be. And whether or not there's a default value. Sometimes, especially with like checkboxes, you'll either want it to be checked or not checked. Um, but for this, we don't want a default value because everybody's LinkedIn profile is going to be different. We click next, and this page is going to be the same for every field that you add. You have to pick which profiles you want this to be visible for and which profiles it's read only for. So if you're a small org, you're probably going to make this visible to everybody because you don't want to hide fields from some of your users. But if you're an org that has different um, roles or different kind of departments, you might set up separate profiles for those people and actually make it so that some fields are visible for some people and not visible for others. And that can be really useful for your users so that they don't have to scroll through hundreds of fields when your stuff starts to get kind of complex. For, <coughs> excuse me, for us today, we're going to make this visible to everybody and we're not going to make it read only. If I made it read only, the users wouldn't be able to edit it or the profiles for the boxes where I check read only, because I can do it on some boxes but not others, those profiles wouldn't be able to edit the data in there. That can be really useful when you're setting up like an intern um, or somebody who just needs to be able to read data but shouldn't be able to edit it, but for our case, we're not going to use that. The other important thing to recognize is that these aren't users that you're making this available to. These are profiles. And every time you create a user, you have to assign a profile to them. A lot of us, when we start using Salesforce, just apply system administrator to everybody. And while that's not ideal, I totally get it. I've been there. I work with a lot of people that are there as well. So if that's the case, you're going to definitely want to make sure that this is available and visible to the system administrator. And then any other profiles that are used, you're going to want to be really specific on those. When you click Next, we're taken to the page that asks us which page layouts we want this field to apply to. And a page layout is based on record types. If you don't know what that is, I would highly recommend checking out the article, Objects, Record Types, and Relationships, oh my, um, to get a better understanding of what these are. We're going to say that we only want this to apply to our contact layout, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. Now, if I go back to my John Doe record and I click Refresh, by default, any new field is added to that, that page layout that we selected down at the bottom of the first details pane. You can totally move that around. While that loads, I'll show you how. By going into page layouts, selecting the page layout that you want to edit, and then moving that field around to the area that makes the most sense for you so that they're not all just going in where Salesforce thinks they make sense. So from here, I can click contact layout. And once this page loads, we'll see that the LinkedIn URL is already added to this page because we asked it to be. If I search for LinkedIn and I double click that, it'll show me exactly where it is. And there it is right there. So I can move that around as necessary. Today, we're not going to worry too much about that. Going back to my contact that we're working with, John Doe here, once his page finishes loading and I go to the details area, I should see that I now have a LinkedIn URL field available that we just created. And there it is. This little icon next to it is that help text that I typed in for my users. So copy and paste the link from the contacts URL profile here. If I click the little pencil icon to edit this, it will allow me to come in and I'll just paste in the URL for this contact, John Doe. And now our new field has data in it for this contact, and if I click on it, it automatically takes me to his LinkedIn profile, which saves my users a bunch of time so they don't have to go search for it every time they want some information off of it. This is one small example of how to create a field. There's lots of different options and lots of different ways in which you will do this in your organization, but the basics are always going to be the same. You always go to Setup, you always go to the Object Manager, you find the object you want to make a field for, you go to Fields and Relationships, you select New, you pick your data type, you fill in your basic info for that data type, 
you select which profiles it's visible and or read only to, and you select which page layouts it's going to show up on. And then it's ready for use. So I hope this is useful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. And until next time, keep doing the awesome work you're doing to create a greater impact in your communities.